Welcome to the past. A time of amicable rhythms, well-disposed refinements, a period of quality, a gracious time, a sensible time. Yesterday, somewhat uneasily as constant today, like myself, extinct yet somehow still among the living. A regal dinosaur in the midst of a modern city. This is my possession. Man's field house to my guests, who stay a week, a month, or a lifetime. Man's field house is home to me. If you will, a relic of what once was, a ghost in antique wood and paint, yesterday's courtly phantom standing frozen in today's most uncourtly world. Good evening. Oh, good evening, sir. Ah, yes, which brings us to our point, said the devious dinosaur. But I should introduce myself. My name is Essex, Winston Essex. But to continue, ghosts somehow seem indigenous to yesteryear, part and parcel of antiquity. Gothic aliens grotesquely incompatible with the nuclear age. And yet, they still exist. Like Mansfield House, like me, like you. But uh, let's not be rude and stare, but if you'll glance in the mirror, you'll see two charming young people who are receiving a bottle of champagne and my compliments. Their names are John and Eileen Travis. The Travises have been guests here while their house is being completed. Tomorrow, they're leaving for their new home in the country, a town called Pleasant Hill. I understand they've built quite a nice house there. For the nursery, of course, the child is due in a month. It all sounds highly promising, doesn't it? Country living, youth, and love, and parenthood. And yet, I, I feel uncomfortable. I feel negative for some inexplicable reason. I, well, I truly wish they weren't going there. Sweetheart, I don't hear anything. But there were footsteps. I heard them perfectly. All right. John, don't. There's somebody down there. Hey, there's been somebody or something down there practically every night since we've moved in. But this is the first time I've heard footsteps. You sure? Yes. We should call the police. Sweetheart, I really don't think I could go through that again. Let me check first. John, no. I'll be all right.
operator, would you get me the... Um, no, no, it's all right, thank you. John? What are you doing? Upstairs. He's upstairs. I heard him right outside the door. Operator, get me the police. I mean. Well, whoever it may have been, they're gone now. Thanks very much, Sergeant. Not at all. You did the right thing by calling us. Uh, I'll check the grounds now, ma'am. Good night. You want to lock the front door after me? Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much. Perfectly all right. Good night. Good night, ma'am. you think, though. We talk about it in the morning? I heard footsteps, John. Okay. Sweetheart, I have an awful big day in court tomorrow. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I've been hearing all sorts of strange noises since we moved in, and most of my imagination, I suppose, but... but I never heard footsteps before. I didn't say that you didn't hear them. It's possible we had an intruder, but if we did, he's gone now. What do you say we get some sleep? John likes it. Would you like some? Oh, I'd love some. Will you join me, Mrs. Ramsey? Oh, no, thanks. I had plenty. I'd better finish up with the dishes. I'm sorry I didn't do them last night. I was just so tired. Don't be silly, love. After all, that's what I'm here for. Come and sit down. Would you like to put your feet up? Oh, no, thank you. Didn't sleep much again last night, huh? I don't know what's the matter with me. I'm driving poor John crazy. Last night I heard footsteps outside our bedroom. Well, don't give it a thought. When I was carrying my first, I heard frogs under the bed. Frogs? Days on end. Hmm. You know, Pleasant Hill hasn't been very pleasant for us, I'm afraid. <laughs> It's funny they should build this town on this hill. It certainly was never considered pleasant when I was a child. 
This, this is Pleasant Hill? Yes, your house is built right on it. Oh, well, it was nothing. It was superstition. You know how children love to scare themselves. What was so scary about it? Oh, well, there was a rumor that there had been a cemetery here once, but no one cemetery. really knew. Oh, I've... I've upset you. I'm sorry. No. No, I'm all right. These are things out of the distant past. Nothing to do with now. You have a lovely new home here. Why don't you find a spot for your statue? And then drive into town and get some more material for the baby clothes. Get your mind off of all of this nonsense. That's a good idea. I don't know. Everything's all right there. Come on. It's all right. Uh, you wait here. I'll be right back. case like the Johnsons, I wonder what makes people like that get married in the first place. I mean, they, uh, they're enemies, implacable enemies, like World War III in that court. After blood. Sometimes Mrs. Johnson's lawyer and I look at each other and I swear it's... it's all we can do to keep from bursting out laughing. Something in this house. Something. Yes. What are they? A ghost? In a brand new house? All right, it's not a ghost then. But there's something here. And I'm not just being a foolish pregnant woman. Of 
first beautiful child. And now, my beautiful wife, would you uh, get my beautiful briefcase? You. you haven't disturbed me, child. Just napping a bit. I'm sorry. Oh, think nothing of it. I'll be having my eternal sleep soon enough. Come in. Come in. Thank you. Oh, to what do I owe this pleasure? The uh, librarian gave me your name and address. Miss Tate. Yes. Nice girl. Doesn't know the stats too well. Nice girl, though. Would you like some tea? Yes. The kettle is on. Thank you. She said you're an absolute fund of knowledge about local history. Oh, yes. That I am. That I am. <laughs> it's been years since a pretty girl has graced these walls. Please, be comfortable. Thank you. It will be only a moment. Can guarantee the quality of my tea. But the cookies will help to kill the taste. Oh, you don't have to go to any trouble. No trouble at all. Absolute delight. Your dropping in has done more for my prime ordeal arteries than a decade of prescriptions, I assure you. So, what can I do to help you? Well, you see, um, my husband and I had our house built on Pleasant Hill. Oh, did you? Yes. Cream and sugar? Please. Lovely spot, Pleasant Hill. But, uh, um, didn't it used to be a cemetery? A cemetery? Oh, no. What, what was it then? In the 18th century, they called it Gibbet Hill. Gibbet. Gallows. It was a place of execution. If your house is built on the crest of Pleasant Hill, and I assume it must be, to take proper advantage of the view, then very likely it's constructed over the very spot on which the gallows stood. You shouldn't let that disturb you, child. All this happened almost two centuries ago. The gallows were dismantled in 1779, following heated public reaction to the hanging of a young girl. A girl? For the first and only time, Thomasina Barrows, 19. A tragic incident. Her life was an endless series of calamities. Orphaned at seven, I have a book here somewhere. Ah, I remember. Married less than a year when her husband was killed in the war, losing her child at birth shortly afterward. Finally, sentenced to hang for stealing a loaf of bread. They really did things like that? Oh, yes. <laughs> ah, here we are. Would you please hand me that magnifying glass? Thank you. Malefactor, Thomasina Barrows, 19 years old, thief. At 11 o'clock in the forenoon 
on Saturday, the second day of March, 1779, the condemned woman cried to the assembly that she went now to her final home from which no one could ever evict her again. After that, she only laughed, a laugh so terrible and mocking that those who heard it swore it was laughter from hell itself. She died unrepentant. Little wonder. Where was she buried? It was customary in those days to bury victims of the gallows on the hilltop. She's there then, she's... She's there where our house is. Yes. Poor, maddened thing that she was. Finally, at rest. Sina Abdero, you have been sentenced by a lawful tribunal and will now be hanged by the neck until you are dead. John, where are you? John! Excuse me, Doctor. I'm down here. Is something wrong? What are you doing? I'm talking to Dr. Ridley. Oh, is he here? No, no, no. It's on the phone. Well, why didn't you use the phone from up here? I didn't want to wake you, babe. Are you all right? Yes, I... I just got scared because I didn't know where you were. It's all right. Go back to bed. I'll be up in just a minute. Sorry, Doctor. No, I... I don't know why she woke up. I even gave her a sleeping pill. Yes, I know I shouldn't have given it to her without calling her. But she was practically hysterical. Well, doctor, uh, you don't think she's having a nervous breakdown or anything, do you?
Cena Barrows. Prepare your immortal soul for everlasting rest. No. Never! Never! me to carry her upstairs. Yes, would you please, Mrs. Ramsey? Oh, my. Isn't she precious? <laughs> oh, she's the lambkin of the world. <laughs> Another conquest for Carolina. Every second. Uh huh. They're beautiful. That's not every day your lady comes home, you know. Oh, I love you. fresh with nothing to frighten you. So I got rid of the statue. Hmm? Are you happy? Yes, I'm happy. Come on, then. Doctor's orders. It's upstairs to bed with you, sweetheart. <laughs> You know something? You and Dr. Ridley were right. It was my imagination. I'm gonna be fine. Honey? I was just looking. And? Let's go to sleep. Love. Oh, 
hope it doesn't wake the baby. Babies sleep through anything. Um, what time is it? Now, don't worry. He'll be home soon now. Oh, would you get the phone, please? Oh, of course I will. Hello? Oh, yes. Mr. Travis. Yes? Yes. Oh, dear. Is something wrong? How long will it be? I see. Of course, of, of course I will. All right, then. Uh, would you like to talk with Mrs. Travis? I'll tell her, of course. Uh, drive carefully, sir. Goodbye. What is it? The main road has been cut off by some fallen trees, and he's going to have to drive home by way of West Ridge. Well, that's so far. It would take an hour at least, he thinks. Is he all right? Yes, he's fine. He would have talked to you, but he thought you would rather he'd be at home sooner. An hour. Um, I hate to do this to you, but would you mind... It's all right. My family will do fine until I arrive. I would like to call if I miss. Oh, now, now, don't be frightened, dear. This happens all the time. They'll have the lights on before you know it. Go check my baby. Oh, oh, wait. Now, let me get you a candle. Oh, yes. Here's one here. Oh, my God. It's only a star. It's only a star. Would you like me to go up for you? No, I'll do it, but thank you. Well, I'll light some candles and get dinner. She leave. She said she wouldn't. Ah! Don't worry. Everything's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. No, I will not stay in this house one minute longer. I know. We'll wait in the station wagon until Daddy gets home.
he doing? What's wrong? Where's Mrs. Ramsey? She left you alone. Come on. Oh, sweetheart, you like ice? Yeah. Let me hold Karen. Huh? Thomasina Barrows, it appears, had finally and irrevocably found us of a home from which no one could ever evict her again. I hear that the child, Caroline, is beautiful and healthy, and that her father loves her. He doesn't seem to notice either the indications of impending wildness or her most unusual laugh. Well, he feels, of course, that the entire incident was psychological on his wife's part. As for the mother, well, she doesn't ever talk of it with anyone. She's a singularly quiet woman nowadays. Now the strange herself, they say. It's a pity because while she was living in Mansfield House, she was quite a lovely child herself. Ah, new guests. I must go down and make their acquaintance. I want them to be happy here. The Mansfield House has a very strange history, you know. Not everyone, I'm sorry to say, has been happy here. I, I've even been told that parts of the house are haunted. Some of my guests have claimed to see ghosts. Of course, that can't be true. See, I don't believe in ghosts. Do you?